Good morning, good morning. Ah, I forgot to turn my camera around. <laughs> Goodness gracious. It is early in the morning. That's okay. Hello, hello, good morning, Melissa. Hello, Nicole. Hello, ladies. I was having a little bit of trouble with my regular computer this morning, so I am using my phone. Sometimes I kind of like it better anyways, because my, my video camera on my computer is like right here. So I kind of like being able to see everything. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Roxy. Hello, ladies. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. It is 6 a.m. I was going to play a doxology this morning, but that's okay. I'll just do it next time. I, I like the I like the music. I listened to it already, but I like the music in the morning. Oh gosh, my voice is going a little bit. Don't know why. Good morning, Susanna. Good morning, Kimberly. Hi, Victoria. I'm gonna drink some of my water this morning. I was having no voice issues yesterday. I don't know why I'm cracking this morning. Maybe it's because I'm trying to be quiet. My husband's sleeping upstairs, but he should be getting up anyways. So I'll just use my big girl voice and <laughs> talk. All right. So it said it was trying to reconnect. So um, if it kind of blips out, it looks like my phone will bring it back. But hopefully it'll work just fine this morning. We're not going to let the enemy hinder any. Thing. I don't care if I got to do it will work and God's word will come through this morning amen to that good morning Latoya good morning Colette <laughs> I know I love my cow <laughs> I need to get a whole ball of them I could look at their their beautiful faces all day long they're so sweet and so cute all right, so let's go ahead and get started this morning, and we're going to start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much, Father God, for your word. I thank you so much, God, that you give us so much that we get to teach people, because there are so many different situations in the world that that it, it's the world. It's a sinful place. And you give us resources to reach out to you, Father God. You give us a word to comfort us in every, situ every single situation. And you give us word that keeps us safe, God. And I thank you and I praise you for that. We glorify you this morning, God. You, Jesus, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we praise you and we honor you, God. And we ask your sweet Holy Spirit to be in this space. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My name is Stacy Radel, and I am the Health and Wellness Director for A Woman, A Wife, and A Mother Ministries, where we are teaching women, honoring the wife, and establishing joy in mothering. And right now, we are doing the six days of, of prayers for your children. And how this parenting thing um, looks to God and what we can do as a parent in every single stage. So we are focusing on the mothering aspect. And these teachings aren't just for the mom right now. They're also for the dads can learn a lot off of this as well. So I encourage you to invite in um, the dads of your children to listen along as we go through this teaching. We are going to start out with um, what I'm teaching about. I am teaching in today about prayers of intercession. And this is something I hold very dear and near to me because this is something that I have been doing. And I think as parents, we all do it, but I have been in a battle for a while for my children. They... And, and, and I think a lot of us have been, because just as Pastor Lane was talking before, we, you know, what really matters is that our children know the Lord. What really is important is not that um, our children 
are doing good in school, they're doing good in society, they are good people, but what matters is their soul salvation, their eternity. If something were to happen to them right now and they were to perish, are they going to hell where there is there is screaming and burning and gnashing of teeth? Or are they going to be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven? That is the ultimate goal of praying intercession for our children. Where is their soul salvation going? And I wouldn't say all children because some of our kids do know the Lord. And we can still intercede for them on behalf um, of, of them. But a lot of, a lot of parents are are in agony right now because of their children's soul salvation that they look good on paper but they don't look good in the eyes of the judge of Jesus Christ and so we want to go down that road but we're going to go down all roads so don't say well this doesn't apply to me it applies to everybody and we want to stay there um, so praying for your children is really one of the most important things that you can do for them as a parent. We take care of them, we feed them, we clothe them, we help them get an education. But in the spiritual realm, praying for them is one of the most important things that we can do for our children. And if you are not currently praying for them, I pray that you do. I pray that you, if you have grown weary in praying for them because it has been a long time, I pray that you jump back up and you keep pressing towards that. So it really is, it's a constant spir spiritual warfare that we have going on that, that is raging against our children. The devil is never going to stop wanting them. And the only time the devil is going to stop really pushing after them is when they have totally worked themselves against God and the devil doesn't have any work to do. So we are going to pray in all circumstances. And why does the devil come after our children? Because the enemy knows that the family is the, one of the most important structures um, it's one of his prime targets. When he can destroy the enemy, he destroys the entire family. And each person in that family has, it will suffer from it. So that is the first thing that, he, that the enemy loves to attack. And he can do this from the family when the mother is pregnant all the way to adult children. So we are coming against the enemy this morning. And we are going to learn the battle plan for that. Um, so here is what I have for, for what came to me and here are my suggestions for you that God really laid on my heart. Um, he had me look up intercession because sometimes I think we don't realize what intercession is. So we need to realize that intercession. So of course I looked up the dictionary words for it and this is what I found. Intercession, an act or instance of interceding. Well, thank you. What is interceding? <laughs> um, but intercession was also imposing or pleading on behalf of another person, which I think most of us think, yes, that's what it is. I'm stepping in. I'm pleading. I'm asking God to answer this prayer for my children. And it's a prayer on, on to God on behalf of another. We're not praying for ourselves. We're interceding. We're stepping in for someone else. And to intercede is to act or impose on behalf of someone in difficulty or trouble. So it doesn't have to be a, mess, a necessary crisis, but it just could be difficulty in this situation. Maybe they're growing weary of praying for themselves, your children are. Maybe they're not praying for themselves. Maybe you see the difficulty that they don't, especially when they're in that teenage, young adult years and the frontal lobe is not fully developed. They don't see long term, but we can see the, the difficulty in the road ahead in our older, wiser wisdom and experience that we have in our life. 
And we do that as pleading or, pe or petition to attempt to reconcile differences between two people or groups. So we may be praying and interceding that there's forgiveness that's taking place or that our child gets favor in certain circumstances, the job, um, the school or, or, you know, for God to get them on that path that they need to go, that we intercede that that door opens for them and to interpose. And that is to place between cause or or intervene. We're placing our prayers between our child and God. And we, and I like this one, to put a barrier or obstacle between or in the way of. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that barrier between the devil's agenda for my child. Because if they don't know the Lord, they're not talking to God. And I am interceding on their behalf. And I'm talking to God because I want to, there to be a barrier in between what the enemy wants to do and what he is trying to accomplish. So that is what intercession means in the earthly realm. And in the spiritual realm, it's a prayer that pleads to God for your needs or the needs of others. So we're talking about the needs of our children, but it also is much more than that. Intercession is taking hold of God's will because God's will over our children's life is good. They are... Every child has a purpose that God gave them before they were formed in our wombs. And they are, we want God's will to move forth in our children's life. So we are praying that into existence. And God, in our prayer life, God will show, her, show us a glimpse of what our children's futures are. We can see in them what their spiritual giftings are in their personalities. So we are, we are praying that into will, especially when they're not doing it. And intercession is refusing to let go until his will comes to pass. It is holding on to God and say, I am not letting go until you bless me, just as Jacob did. I don't care if you got to break my hip. I am holding on until that happens. And that's what intercession, intercession is. It is war, warfare. And we keep seeing this over and over. We are part of God's army. We are pushing his agenda forward. We are, we are pressing in and battling and fighting for for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we are part of that army. And part of that is our, is our, our parenting. We have been giving the job. We have been giving the label as parent. And we are to push forward in this war of God's battle plan. But the battleground is not of this earth. So we can't always get our feelings when we see something of our kids on social media and we start to feel a certain way. We got to remember, God's got this. This is not an earthly battle because I have already seen what God has in the future and I am not going to be distraught by this little whatever it is. I'm not going to let it bug me because this is a battleground that isn't on the earthly things. It's the spiritual. So we're going to attack those demons. We're going to attack that flesh and we're going to have the Holy Spirit come down and God breathe new life into our children and, and to see things and to bring his wisdom into their situations. The Bible says we are not fighting against the humans. We are fighting against forces, authority, against rulers of darkness and spiritual powers in heaven above. Ephesians 6.12. So the devil was cast out. He was cast out of hell and he was given dominion over the earth. And, the, and, and God allowed that. And God will come to the earth and he will work on our behalf through our prayers and our intercession for our children. So it is a battle plan. But we have to remember that there is a target. And so we have to ask God what the target is. 
We know, okay, it's my child, but we have to ask God for his wisdom. God, show me how to pray. Show me the issue that is in my child's life. Show me, is there something that they are not telling me? Because they don't always tell us everything. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So we have to ask for God's wisdom. God, reveal it to me. Show me what I am fighting against. What is it? It's not just, um, it may not just be the spirit of addiction, but there might have been um, sexual trauma that was there in the past that we didn't know. And we got to ask God to reveal those so that we can, we can go deeper in our prayers and pray for them. And again, this isn't just for our prodigal children. This is also for our children who know the Lord. And so we ask for wisdom for them because there may be something that they are dealing with that maybe they just did they may have pushed aside there may have been something that happens or you know especially as they become adults and they're not with us anymore and there could be situations that they are rising against that they have anger or rage or wrath against someone and they don't even know how to deal with it um, it's just nothing that they have dealt with when they were under the umbrella of our home so we have to ask God to reveal those things and we can ask God to reveal future attacks from the enemy onto our children because the more that our children know the Lord the more that the devil is coming after them and so we need to intercede on their behalf as well and how are we so we are in this battle and we're asking God our general for the battle plan what's the battle plan and he arms us with the word that is our sword is the word of God so we are going to take the word of God as our sword and now we're going into battle with it and how do we go into battle we go there armed but we also persist in this battle and we have to stay strong in this battle and so this prayer doesn't give up it doesn't give up. It asks, it seeks, and it knocks. And that comes from Luke 11.10. And I'll never forget. I've heard that so many times. And I'll never forget Pastor Elaine one time teaching it this way. And she said, sometimes, you know, we do. We ask. And sometimes in the beginning, something is that comes along. We're like, God, I pray this over my child. I pray that... Um, that they just don't get involved in this situation. I pray that they don't. We're just going to use drug addiction as as um, as something. We pray that they just don't, you know, let their minds be altered. I pray that they do not get addicted. And then we find that, you know, that answer, that prayer is not getting answered. And so sometimes we're seeking God. We're like, we're looking. I'm seeking you, God. I've asked you, Lord, and now I'm seeking you. What does your word say? What are your promises that the, the prayers of the righteous availeth much, God? You said that. You said that. And I am living a righteous life. I am, I am repenting to you. I am turning away from saying, God, and I'm seeking you. And your word says this. And then as more times goes on, all of a sudden, it's changing. The prayer's changing because we're like, we don't see the answer being, it, it's not being answered yet. And so we're like, God. Hello? You're not answering the door, God? Answer me, Lord. Oh, my phone's slow. Answer me, God. Do you hear me, God? God, pray help my child. God, help them. And now we are knocking. We, are, we want God to hear us. So there's different stages to this intercessory prayer. And then we knock and we're like, God, I know you hear me. And then the next day, I may knock again. And then the next day, I'm like, you know what? Now I'm going to seek you, God. I'm going to seek you. And I'm going to ask you, God. So when I'm driving in my car, I may not be knocking, but I may be like, God, I know you got this. God, so we are going to ask and seek and knock continuously. And we're persisting in that battle. And we are taking in our sword. And we are never giving up. And we are growing weary. We are going to reach out to other people to help us also pray. 
That's why our sisterhood is so important. That's why um, family is so important in the body of Christ because we are going to ha have other people. They may have different levels of wisdom and, and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And we have prophets that are in our church that will help us. We have prayer warriors that are in our church that will pray and help breathe new life when we are getting weary. They will hold up our hands just as the hands of Abraham were open up. So we have to remember that. So God is good. And he has given us so much. Here we go. I'm like, oh, where did I go? So he has given us so much word to work off of. I mean, it's amazing. So there's so how do we pray for our children biblically? And how do we do that with the scripture? So how do we how do we get arms when we go into prayer? And there are so many different ways. I know for myself and my husband, we have been in a certain battle this year for our children to where we pray for one or all for them every single night before we go to bed. And we do it whether he is home or whether he is not. And we started praying, of course, it was not like we just started praying this year, but we've been praying for a while. And, you know, sometimes the Bible gives us what we need. And sometimes there are people who have already authored ways of putting all of those scriptures into books. And that's okay to use a book. We are praying for your adult children, um, praying for your prodigal daughter. We, there's so much from, these are from parents who have been there and who have waged war and their children have come home to the Lord and they've, their soul salvation is, is secure in the Lord and sometimes not. So find the resources of good godly people that teach the word of God and you can use. A lot of times they have prayers in there that you can just insert because when we start growing weary and we feel like I'm just praying the same thing, that there is... Um, there is the word of God and it can be your child's name can just be inserted in there. Lord, I pray that my child and it says name that child will enjoy good health and long life. So we also know that we need to pray blessings over our children. So there are 12 different ways that we can pray for our children and and this is where we, we want to make sure that we are looking at these areas. So number one is we want to pray that they will trust in Christ as their Savior. We want to pray that they will trust in Christ as their Savior. And this comes from Psalm 61.3 where it says, Oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirst for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And your prayer for your child could look like this. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that my child will have a thirst for you. I pray that my child will will feel as if they are in a desert and that they are not close to you, that they they are thirsty and they are hungry for you, God, and they are gonna they are going to seek after the living water to quench their thirst. I pray that in Jesus' name. So we want to make sure that we are that we are taking God's word and we are praying that over our children. And so we also in Timothy Timothy 315 that they will trust the Lord. Timothy, Timothy second, oh gosh, goodness great, maybe I need some water. Maybe not. I do talk a little fast sometimes in the morning. I feel like we're, oh, we only have so much time. But that's one of the great things about Facebook Live is this, is the fact that when you're getting ready in the morning, you can take me in the car with you. Just take me on your mobile device with you in the car. You can listen to this on your way to work or school or wherever you're going or to drop off the kids. And if you can't finish, you can come back later because we're going to still be hanging out on the A Woman, Wife, and a Mother Facebook page. <laughs> I love technology. Isn't it great? Good old water in the morning. All right. So 2 Timothy 3.15 says, 
and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in jesus christ so if we have parented our children young and had them in church or adolescence or as a teenager we can pray god i know your word is in them they have heard the truth god and you are able to make them wise for salvation god regurgitate that wisdom that they have learned bring it to their mind god a lot of times I'll pray, God, there is so much scripture in your in the music that people have put out there, that these Christian artists, that they use scripture. God, my children have listened to their song. Bring that back to their memory. Put them in a place where all of a sudden they're singing out your word and that it is getting into their mind and to their heart. So you can pray in so many different ways over your children. And so... We want to pray, number two, that they will hate evil. And that comes from Psalms, Psalms 97.10, which says, You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of the saints. He delivers, delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. God, my children know what evil is. They hate evil. And I pray, God, that you give them a, you show them all the evil that is in the world. Show them exactly. So if they think something is okay, God, I pray that you reveal to them that that is evil and that they detest it, God, because the world will tell you these days that certain things are okay. And they, they make it seem completely normal. Um, just... You know, one of the big things is marijuana. Oh, it's legal now, so we can smoke it. Not according to God. It, it completely, it's gluttony. Because it's not like you can have just a little bit of marijuana, like one drink. You can't just have one alcoholic drink and walk away and you're fine. You're still sober. One puff off a joint gets you high and alters your minds and opens a portal for the enemy to come in. And that is not okay. So we pray that God reveals that evil to them. Or they may think that, um, you know, you hear so many times that it is a, that kids are, you know, we're good. It's good. And the TV is showing sex before marriage is completely normal. Moving in with a boyfriend or a girlfriend before marriage is completely normal. And it's not, not according to the word. So we ask God to have us show that evil, disrespecting authority, disrespecting our police officers. Um, it just seems to run rampant right now. And that is not okay. Even disrespecting our president, people will call him Agent Orange and, and names like that. But according to God's word, that is not okay. So there's so many different levels to that. Um, not paying full price for something or cheating on something. I mean, there's so many different realms of that and serious levels that the, the world will say it's okay, but it's not okay. And number three, that they will be caught when doing wrong. That they will be caught when doing wrong. And Numbers 32, 23 says, But if you do not do so, then take note. You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sins will find out. Pray that if your child is doing something, that it is found out. Because God already knows. God, all, he knows everything going on in the dark. He sheds light in every dark place. So if your child thinks I am all alone and I am cutting myself and I'm hurting no one but myself, guess what? God is right there watching and weeping for your child. And so if ask God to reveal that and pray over that, and I pray that when they are doing something wrong, and it could be as simple as, you know, really could be not paying their taxes, that they may work for themselves or they may try to deceive the government or the insurance company on something. And that we pray, God, because God sees all of that. He sees all of the internal stuff. So pray, God, that, that you find them out. Let them get caught in what they're doing, God. Let them get caught, whether it's by... It, it takes legal action or it's just the fact that they are busted and someone rebukes them for it, God. <clears throat> Let them be caught in doing wrong. 
And Galatians 6, 7 also says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Thinking about God watching them. Oh, it, it, but that's in parentheses. That was mine. But that he may also reap. So even if in the earthly realm, they do not get caught and that they think they get away with it in the spiritual realm, that is not a good thing because God will put his wrath upon them or you're pleasing the enemy and Satan is pleased by what they're doing. And so we're going to fight against that, that it is found out and that they have a repentance heart for that. So God, show them what's doing wrong. Bring them um, conviction, not condemnation, because that comes from the enemy and that can lead to things like suicide and depression and anxiety. But bring conviction to them, Lord, so that they repent and they turn away from that. And um, that's one thing I always, that in the parentheses, I pray that my, God, my children are always thinking about how God is watching them. Even when they're alone, they think, if I do this, I'm, I'm not really alone. I'm not really alone. If they're masturbating, God's watching them. God's watching them. And that is not a good thing. They're not alone in those situations. So I always pray against that. Four, that they will be protected from evil, the evil one in each area of their lives, spiritual, emotional, and physical. And that is in John 17, 15. So I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. And of course, that goes in lines. So we want to make sure that God do not... Do not take them out of this world. God, do not let them die before their soul is saved. Keep them healthy and alive in this world until their soul salvation can go to you. Don't let my babies go to hell, God. Don't let my babies go to hell. Let them be welcomed and ushered into heaven, God. That is a prayer that we have for all of our children. Because if they are backsliding, if they think that they're okay and, and that their their soul salvation is secure, God, he, he rejects, he spicks out the lukewarm Christian. He vomits them from his mouth. He said it's better to not know the Lord at all than to know the Lord and know the word and walk away from him. So we have to pray against that because sometimes we don't know exactly where our children are in their walk with God. Are they in fire or are they lukewarm? And we don't want them lukewarm. We don't want to think that they're okay. They were baptized as a child. They were baptized as a baby. They know the word. They're not doing the word, but they're okay. I'm, you know, it doesn't work that way. It, it just doesn't. And sometimes we're so deceived by that. So we want to fight for our children and ask God to reveal to you what areas that that needs to be in. So number five, that they will have a responsible attitude in all of their relationships. And that comes from Daniel 6.3. Then Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave gave thought to setting him above the whole of them. So we ask, always we ask God to put our children above. Make them the head and not the tail. Make them the lender and not the borrower. Don't let them be a slave in this world. Let them have God's favor upon them. And, um, and no matter where they are, that God opens doors, that they're in, their bosses see favor in them because they have the right attitude and they, have the, they are walking in authority um, that Jesus has given them over this world. Um, I always love, there's a prayer that I've done for my children. It always says that my children may be in this world, but they are not of this world. I love that one. So also, number seven, that they will desire to have wise friends and be protected from foolish companions. And this comes from Proverbs 1, 10 through 6. Sorry, people are like texting me while, while I'm doing this. So um, Proverbs 10, 10 through 16, in the easy to read version, 
My son, those who love to do wrong will try to trick you. Don't listen to them. They will say, come with us. Let's hide and beat to death anyone who happens, who happens to walk by. We will swallow them whole as grave swallows the dying. As the grave swallows the dying, we will take everything they have and fill our houses with stolen goods. So join us. You can share everything we get. My son, don't follow them. Don't even take the first step along the path. They run to do something evil. They cannot wait to kill someone. And this doesn't necessarily have to be murder. This could be they're killing people just with the words that they say, with the texts, with tweets, with bullying. You can be murdering someone when you aren't kind. You're murdering their spirit. You're murdering their, their, um, their um, self-confidence. Um, murder doesn't have to be, I mean, it could be beating someone up and physically, but it could be emotionally as well that you could be murdering when you're teasing, when you jump on board with other people and you tease people. We don't want our children to join into that. And they could be robbing other people when you steal. I mean, there's so many different levels. These are just levels that, that, um, that are in the scripture, but we got to remember that, um, you could be murdering someone when you hand them over to drugs or alcohol. You could be murdering them as well. You are stealing God's purpose from them when your children go on that path of the and hanging out with people they're not supposed to. They are stealing from God. Or they are stealing from that person their purpose. So looking at it from the spiritual as well. So number eight, that they will be kept right for their spouse. And that comes from Proverbs 19, 14. And it's going to come from 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. And that talks about the sexual immorality. And we have to remember that sexual immorality, that it degrades and misuses the body. And it can look on so many different levels. And I pray that you read that and you walk that out because the only sex that is allowed by God is that between a husband and a wife, period. No matter where you look in the Bible, that is all you're going to find. And they shall become one flesh. Because it is an intimacy that you bind together with your husband or your wife just as you bind yourself to God. It is not just a physical act. It is a spiritual act. Um, and when we go outside of that, that is sexual immorality. No matter how it looks, masturbation, watching porn, um, anything that prostitution, paying for sex, all of it, um, casual sex. Um, it could be your five, you can have your boyfriend for five years and be living with them. And if you were having sex, it is sexual immorality, even though you're, you're committed to that relationship, but you're not committed in the way that God told you to commit to that relationship. So we pray against that. And I pr I'm already praying for that for my grandchildren. I am praying for that, that God prepares them for their future husband or wife. So we don't only, this intercession isn't only for our children, but it's for future generations to come. So pray that over your children. Um, number nine, that they, as well as those they marry, will remain pure until marriage. Again, saving yourself for the Lord. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 6, um, 13 through 20. Where he is saying um, in this one that, again, the sexual immorality, that um, we are to be equally yoked. And I pray and we pray that our children are not equally yoked in an unbeliever sinful state, but it is under God. Because if we're interceding for our children, we already know that God is going to deliver them, that God is going to put them in a place. So if your child is already married, then you pray for their husband or their wife as well so that they 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 become equally yoked because that 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 
um, that, that child you have by marriage is now your child. Because we're praying for people who are our birth children, our stepchildren, our foster children, our spiritual children. So they could be children of our friends and our family and in our church. We're interceding for all of the children. It doesn't have to be yours physically, but it could be yours spiritually or legally as well. So we're praying, and, and legally is the ones that are already married to our children. So we're praying for them. And so we want to make sure that they are equally yoked. And in number 10, that they will be single-hearted, willing to be sold out for Jesus. And that comes from 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 7, which says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that's that is in you, which therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on my hands. Um, oh, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. So I love, I loved that because I... God, when you're praying to God, God, I know, I know that my, my generations before me were praying. I know, and I know that it is there, that the prayers have gone forward. I know that the word has been spoken and that it went into the ears and to the mind of the children. And so God, stir it up. Stir up their giftings. Stir that up inside of them, God. Um, every, all the prayers that have come before God and intercede on that behalf. And then number 11, that they will be hedged in so they cannot find their way to wrong influence, places, people, or friends. And that these temptations will not come against them. This can be for preventative. This could be something that they're dealing with right now. So we pray this over our children. Even the most innocent little baby, we pray this over them as a preventative measure. And we speak this truth to them all the days of their life. So when we don't want the children to, to go away from their proper worship, and um, God is saying, don't worship any other idols but me and to keep that into remembrance because when they are, when we are hedged in, when we have the hedge of God around us, it's very hard to move out of it. And also it prevents the enemy from coming in. So it's our protective wall. And the number 12, that they will learn the great virtue of humility. And that comes from James 4, 6. And the Amplified Bible Classic Edition says, but he gives us more and more grace. And that is power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. That is why he says, God sets himself against the proud and the haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humbled to receive it. So Lord, we ask that our children are humbled, that they are humbled, that they are not prideful, so that they can see you clearly, Lord. So we constantly pray that over our children because that pride, which we learned in the commandments, it and that haughty spirit can be mixed into so many of um, God's commands of the flesh and just God's commands. So when we're fighting that flesh, boy, that haughty spirit and that pride can rise up. And we do not want, or we want our children humbled in society and humbled before the Lord to make them great and mighty and wise. Um, as they walk on this earth so that they have God's favor with them. Yes, God. So I'm going to read to you. I really like this. This was a quote from Chris Tigreen. And it says, Biblical prayers must, ev must eventually fall in line with biblical agenda, displaying the glory of God. That's why we're armed with the sword when we go into war, when we persist in prayer. There is no better way to gain victory in crisis. 
intercession and petition than to shift our focus from our purpose, our purpose to God's. So we're focusing on what God's purpose and plan is for our children's life, for his will to be done over their life. Not that I really want my child to grow up and be a doctor and make lots of money, so let me pray over that. If that is part of God's purpose, then let it be, and he will lay that on your heart and how you need to pray for that to happen. But we need to pray for God's purpose and God's agenda, because remember, we're waging a war. We are in battle. And we want our child to be part of the God's army. We want them to be a soldier and pressing forward so that when they have children or if they do have children, that now they are part of the battle. They have the plan that they are armed and that they can be persistent. The same thing we are doing, we want for our children because that's where the true power and authority is in this earthly realm. And so we are going to end with a prayer for our families. So I pray, Father God, please place a barrier of protection around around each one of our children right now. Each one of them, God, of the people who are listening now and listen to this later. God, put a barrier protection around each one of our children now. And Lord Jesus, We ask that you would come today at any time necessary to deal with any and all spirit beings which might tempt to harass our children. We pray Ephesians 6 over them, God, that they are armed from head to toe and that they stand fast in your word, God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. And we know that what we have spoken and what we have asked for have gone up into your nostrils and it will come to pass, God. We thank you. We trust you. We love you. And we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I thank you all for listening in. Um, We look forward to just hearing from you. Come check out our Facebook page, which you're probably already on. But we also have a new website, y'all, and it is sharp. So go check us out at a mother, a woman, a wife, and a mother.com and look at our new website and look at all the events that we have coming up. And if you have been blessed by this ministry, we ask you to donate and to help us because websites don't come cheap. And a lot of the training we we get, we, we had a wonderful fundraiser, and we thank you for all of those who came to Mom Prom. But this is ministry, and we love to help people out and also give scholarships for our upcoming mentorship, which is going to be happening in April. So log on to our webpage. Check out the events, and if you can, if God leads you in that direction, we would love for you to donate to this ministry, and if you have been blessed, so we can continue to move forth and bless other people and help get God's word out to women, wife, and mothers everywhere. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.